Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through how to install the latest release of Ubuntu 21.04, the desktop edition. And we'll dual boot it alongside Windows 10. I'm here on my Windows 10 computer where I want to install Ubuntu desktop alongside Windows. So the first thing I want to do is go down to the start menu, hit the start button and use the search. Let's launch the disk management utility. So if you start typing in disk management, you'll see this create and format hard disk partitions. This is the option that we want to select and it's inside the control panel. Let's click on this and let the app launch. Using this application, we're going to make some room for the Ubuntu desktop here on our current disk that has Windows installed on it. We mainly just want to focus on the C drive here at this point. We don't want to touch anything else, including the recovery and the EFI system. These two partitions are very important to Windows, and if you do touch them, you could cause system issues. Also, one thing I want to mention before continuing is to back up your data if you haven't already. It is very important, and I highly suggest to make backups of all your data before continuing because there's always a potential to mess up while installing an operating system and you wouldn't want to lose all your data. With that being said, I'll go down to the C drive where I want to right click on this portion of the partition inside disk zero. Now mine says disk zero, yours could be something else of course. Your partition might not be labeled C, but you're selecting the partition where you want to install Ubuntu alongside. I know that all my current files exist on this C drive and that I have some extra space I can use here. When right clicking, we'll get a menu and we want to select the shrink volume option. So currently I have about 64 gigabytes available on this disk and I'm being told by the application that I can use around 43 gigs out of the 64. That's because the rest is being used by Windows currently. Of course, you can have a different size because your disk size is probably not like mine. And mine's at a very minimal amount right now. 64 gigs is not a lot for two operating systems, so hopefully you have more. And I do suggest to have at least 32 gigs available for Ubuntu, or else you might have problems installing it. So since this is the maximum amount I can shrink by, I'll save a little for Windows and take 32 gigs instead. So that's around 32,000 megabytes for 32 gigs. After that's done, I can hit the shrink button and now I'll see that there's 32 gigs on the C drive for my Windows side and there's 31.25 gigs unallocated, ready to go for the Ubuntu side of things. So that looks good. I can exit out of my app at this point. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, take a moment to subscribe below for future Linux and operating system videos. I post here multiple times a week and what better way to learn Linux than to follow along. All right, now let's take a few moments to go over to ubuntu.com where we'll download the installer image for Ubuntu 21.04. We'll do that by going to the download section and we can click on Ubuntu desktop to select the version we want. You might see Ubuntu 2004 LTS for long-term support. If you'd like to install this instead, you can. I have a video for this as well, so you can dual boot this instead. Again, this is the long-term support version if you need it. I'll put a link in the description below. But what we're interested in today is the newer version, which we want to dual boot with Windows, Ubuntu 21.04. Scroll down until you see it and click the download button. After you hit the download button, that will automatically start your download. And if it doesn't, make sure to hit the download now button and save the file somewhere on your system. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app. If I go down to the start menu and start typing Belena, I'll see my result, which is Belena Etcher. I'll launch that app. And this app will help me flash the contents of the ISO file onto a USB, CD, or DVD of my choice. Belen Etcher is an easy to use application that's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll make sure to post a link in the description below if you want to download the app. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk, such as UNEP Bootin or Rufus. All right, and in the app, I wanna select an image first, which is the image that we just got done downloading. By default, what the download does is gets us this Ubuntu 21.04 desktop AMD 64-bit disk image. We'll click on that and hit open. After we have our image selected, we'll select a target. 
But before you do, make sure you have a USB, CD, or DVD in your computer, and that will automatically populate the device if it's the only device that's in your computer at the moment. You can hit change as well if you have multiple USBs, CDs, or DVDs. Just make sure to select the proper one because it will delete the contents in order to put the install image in that USB, CD, or DVD. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button for me. It really does help me out since I know this is the proper USB that I want selected and I'm okay erasing the contents. I'm going to select it with the check mark and hit continue. Finally, I'll hit the flash button and you might be asked for administrative privileges. You'll have to give them for the flash. I'll hit yes and the flash will now begin. And once things start, this will take a few minutes and after we're finished with the flash, we'll be ready to finish the install process. All right, and once things are done flashing, you can exit out of the app now, and it's time to boot into our BIOS. There's really two ways of doing this. One method, since I'm on the computer where I want to install Ubuntu desktop alongside Windows, I can go to the bottom and hit the start menu. And if I type in boot, I'll get an option called changed advanced startup options related to boot menu. I'll click on this option and get a portion called recovery. What I'm interested in is the advanced startup and hitting restart now. And if you click on the restart now option, you'll get a screen that loads up and allows you to select the USB, CD, or DVD that you just got done creating and flashing with the Ubuntu desktop installer. The system will then restart into the installer. Otherwise, we can take the second approach and make sure that USB, CD, or DVD is inserted into the computer where we want to install Ubuntu alongside Windows, and you'll want to restart that computer. After the computer is restarted, you'll focus on booting into your BIOS in order to set your boot order. So let me show you how I would do it on my computer. All right, and on my computer, while I'm first booting up, there's a screen that tells me to either hit F2 or delete in order to get to my BIOS. So I'm gonna go ahead and spam that until I get into BIOS, as you can see here. And if I successfully got into my BIOS, I can see the screen here where it tells me that I have UEFI BIOS up in the left-hand corner. The key to get into your BIOS might be something different, but we're looking for a screen similar to this. Now mine's a newer based UEFI BIOS, so I can use my mouse in here. And in mine, I can go ahead and select the boot menu by pressing the F8 key. And if I do that, I can see that I have a few options here. Well, the option I'm actually looking for is uh, the UEFI verbatim store and go here for myself because that's the 32 gig USB I used in order to flash my image onto. So I know that's the proper one. Of course, yours might have a different amount of storage space, but instead of actually clicking onto this, I'm going to show you a different way which might look more like your own in order to change the boot order around. I'm going to do the advanced mode in my BIOS, which is F7. And then you might actually see a screen more similar to this one where you have various different tabs at the top. The one we're looking for is something called boot or boot order. This will allow us to change the order around of what devices get booted and in what order. And we're looking for boot option number one to make sure that this is actually selected as the same USB, CD, or DVD that I had just got done flashing. So mine's right here. It's the 32 gigabyte verbatim store and go. I'm gonna select this and now I can see that my boot order option number one is the UEFI USB that I just flashed my Linux image onto. All right, and one other thing I'll make sure is that secure boot and fast boot are disabled on my computer. So for mine, I select an OS type which automatically disables secure boot, but you'll wanna make sure to disable this because otherwise your computer may start Windows instead of other operating systems. After all that's done, I'm going to the exit tab where I can go ahead and save my changes and restart the computer so it can restart into the installer of my Linux image. So I'm going to hit save changes and reset, confirm those changes, and let things reboot. If you still haven't already, smash that like button for me and congratulations if you made it to this part because you're officially in the installer for Ubuntu desktop to set it up alongside a Windows 10 platform. The option that we'll want to select is Ubuntu unless you're having issues trying to load the graphics in Ubuntu, you can go with the safe graphics option. It's something to try if you cannot get the desktop. 
Otherwise, we'll ignore the rest of the selections and click on Ubuntu. Once things are loaded up, you'll be welcomed by the Ubuntu installer where we can select the language that we want to use. I'm going to use English as the default language and click install Ubuntu. Following that, we get to select our keyboard layout. The default is English US. You can select whatever keyboard you're using and then test the keyboard in this field here. Once you're done, click continue. Now we have a few options on how we want to install our system. We can go with the normal installation, which it says it has a web browser, some extra utilities, the office software pre-installed, some games and media players. Otherwise, you can go with the minimal installation if you don't need everything else. This includes a web browser and basic utilities. I'll be choosing the normal installation. And this last option here gives us the ability to install proprietary software and drivers for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. If you have special graphics cards, such as Nvidia manufactured cards or some particular Wi-Fi adapters, you'll need to install these additional drivers. Otherwise, we're ready to continue. So we'll click on that. And since the installer detected that Windows exists already on the disk, we're given the option to install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. You can install it through this option, but in order to see what the layout looks like of our disk, I'm clicking something else and doing it in a custom fashion. I'll hit continue after that. Sometimes you have multiple disks, so you'll want to make sure you're selecting the proper disk and using the custom route makes this a little easier. Here I see a few partitions available, including one disk, which adds up to what I have in my system. So dev SDA represents my entire disk. And on that disk, we have these partitions. We have one megabyte of free space. Then we have SDA one through four. We also know we don't want to touch any of these and we're looking for some free space. So if I scroll down just a little bit, I see free space now. It's about 33 gigs which is how much we shrunk our C partition down by. So it looks like things are adding up here. Up above, it also kind of represents what's happening here. Basically, I have half this disk freed, and then the rest of it is of type NTFS for the Windows file system, and then our EFI system partition that belongs to the Windows Boot Manager. So now that I understand things, I know that I want to use this free space. I'm going to double click on it and use up the entire partition size to create a new primary partition. I'll keep the default here primary. I'll use the beginning of this space and I'll use the ext4 formatted file system for my Linux root file partition. Finally, I'll select a mount point. This is for my root file partition. So I'll select the slash here and nothing else and then hit OK. Up top, you'll see that there is a new updated scheme for the disk and we can see that there's an SDA five with ext4 formatted file partition and we see that it's at the very end well this is good so far but no changes have been made quite yet not until we hit the install button we'll continue by going down here and this is a very important thing to look at make sure that we have the device with windows boot manager selected with this selected the bootloader will be installed on the proper device and I will double check just to make sure by looking up above and confirming dev SDA2 is an EFI type partition because this is for an EFI based Linux installation, meaning your BIOS is EFI based on your particular machine. And in fact, it says Windows Boot Manager. So I have the correct device selected below. Everything looks correct to me at this point. So I'll hit the install now button. So it's about to write all the changes to the disk that we've made. And I know that I've selected the proper partitions and layout scheme. Therefore, I'm ready to continue. Next, we're asked for our time zone. So select yours and then hit continue. Next, we're asked for our name. I'll use Savvy Nick. You can use whatever you want. For the computer name, I'll also use Savvy Nick. You can also put in whatever you want. It does not have to be similar to your name but this is what the rest of the devices on your network will know your computer as. Next, pick a username for a normal user and put in a password for that user and make sure to confirm that password. Make sure to remember this username and password. And I like to select the require my password to log in. That way no one can get in on the computer by just restarting it. That's what login automatically does for you if you want that option. Smash that like button at this point because we're almost done here. 
and now we're ready to hit continue. At this point, Ubuntu has begun installing and it might take a little while, anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour, depending on your system and your internet connection speed. Once the installation is complete, we're asked to restart our system now. We'll click on that button. And here we're also asked to remove the installation medium, then press enter. This means you can remove your USB at this point, And then whenever you have it removed, you can press enter. Make sure to remove the USB or else you may load right back in to the install image. If you do, no big deal. Shut down the computer, remove the install image, and then start it back up. All right, I'll press enter and reboot. And once things have restarted, you'll be welcomed by the Grub bootloader with a few entries now. Welcome to your new Ubuntu 21.04 system. It may automatically select an option. First, I'll go down to the Windows Boot Manager and just double check to make sure that my Windows side is still working properly. I'll press enter and let things load in. Great, it looks like things have loaded. I'll log into my Windows system and everything seems to be here and things are working properly. So I'll restart things once more in order to check the Ubuntu side. I'll hit the start menu and hit restart. And this time I'll select the first option, which is Ubuntu and make sure that the Ubuntu side is working properly. And now that I'm getting my user login screen, I'll use my password that I set up with my user to log in. And congratulations, if you made it this far, you've successfully installed Ubuntu alongside Windows 10. You're ready to go and use your Ubuntu desktop 21.04. Everything's ready to go. The first thing you'll run through is the welcome screen. If you wanna send information to Canonical, you can. I select no and then hit next. I don't turn on any location services. Just hit next and it says you're ready to go. I hit done and that's it. If you're excited, smash the like button and let's do a very quick tour of the desktop environment here. In the middle, we have the time and calendar. On the right side, you have access to settings, logging in, logging out, restarting and shutting down the computer as well as volume control. On the left, if you click activities, you have access to your workspaces as well as a search for applications in the middle. On the left hand side, you have pinned applications that come with the system. The most important ones are probably the web browser and the app store so you can download more software. On the bottom left, you can click show applications and that shows all applications that are pre-installed on the system for you. One great thing about Ubuntu is the ability to put directories and files on the desktop so you can move things around if you want to the desktop. That's probably one of the best features here in 21.04 if you're just new and using it. Make sure to check out some of my other videos and reviews specifically on Ubuntu 21.04 to help you start using your Ubuntu Linux system more efficiently. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.